thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are absolutely delighted to be here in the British Library. Can you give them a cheer for letting us do a show? So, to your extreme left, as you can see, she's in the set of people who are the geek songstress. She also has a physics degree. Put your hands together for Helen Arney! of our group he is our experiment guru he's the one who loves to push that envelope it is mr steve mold <laughs> and finally it's our stand-up mathematician and uh australian matt parker <laughs> these are edits that are happening on wikipedia um so greens uh, our circles are deletes uh, white circles are edits. The larger the circle, the greater the edit. Um, and as new people join Wikipedia, um, you see a blue bar across the top. And um, they've used strings and bells uh, depending on um, which type of thing it is. So you can actually hear what's happening. That's Wikipedia being edited. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Venn diagrams are what people are familiar with. Sometimes people think Euler diagrams are Venn diagrams. So I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to use a group of three uh, things. Uh, I'm going to use um, people who are in Festival of the Spoken Nerd. Um, that's us three. Um, things, uh, so uh, people who are Australians. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, things that have an effect named after them. Um, now, when you draw a Venn diagram, every single area has to be considered. Every single possible combination of things has to be considered. So uh, things that have an effect named after them that aren't in Spoken Nerds uh, or Australian, um, obviously the Lynx effect, the butterfly effect, things like that. Um, um, things that are Australian that have an effect, uh, that's Doppler, the Doppler effect. Uh, he's actually Austrian, but I couldn't find any Australians. Uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are some. I know, I'm sure there are some. I'm sure there are some. Do you want to see a seven way? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Multiple nerdgasm <laughs> on the way. There it is. Yeah, oh. beautiful. I love you guys. Um. Uh, we've seen some phenomenal bits of data visualization. I mean, data that has changed the course of history. And I'm going to show you this. <laughs> this was recently declared to be the worst bit of data visualization ever. The Guardian crowned this the absolute worst. It's in a guide of how to contact a startup to get a job. This is the section on how to choose a startup. And this is the infographic that was distributed. If you're wondering what the chickens represent, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> this is from a government presentation I came across. That's there you are. Just, th there's, there's software designed to making charts this complicated easy for you. What was that? That's reasonable. That's reasonable. <laughs> You've seen what? <laughs> I wonder if, right, they've taken into account the, like, literally just that. I thought, I was like, well, I can check, right? If I come out of this, if I copy that diagram and put it into Photoshop, right, <laughs> I could then go in, I could select, right, I could use this as a reference point because for a billion I can get the number of pixels for that, right, and I could calculate the actual number of pixels that make up this particular, and then I suddenly realised what I was doing with my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a common problem, you do get, this is off the front cover of a magazine from the US, there is no rhyme or reason behind the various, this is quite a famous one that was picked up a couple of years ago, no rhyme and reason between these, and also what point are they trying to get across, right, so none of, those don't match either of the two optional. Maybe there's a third one we're unaware of, right? So these are called bubble plots. I am personally offended by bubble plots, but it gets worse. So here we go. This was an infographic about uh, ways to promote your local business on a website. There are the classic errors, like uh, who needs a scale? <laughs> just, and just the word percentage. <laughs> just hanging out. No actual percentages involved. Uh, we need a mathsy word to put on the app, but label your axes, but it doesn't matter what with. Going up on the left is, the is the frequency, note, the frequency, frequency from yeah. low to high. So it's low notes all the way up to the highest notes that you can hear. And then along the horizontal axis is time. Yeah. And uh, the different colours are, they're just a code for the intensity of the sound at any one point. 
Um, and red is more intense than blue. So the most intense, the loudest, the most intense is red, and the least intense is kind of that dark blue. All right, okay, so let's so, have a... So if, if I play, if you listen to the sound while watching the screen, I think you, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to match the two together. So that is a wolf whistling bird. You've actually got a microphone where you, I can actually have a go at this. And this is what we're doing in the breakout room uh, in the interval. Uh, we'll do it in 10 minute chunks. So we'll do three 10 minute chunks during the breakout rooms. You can actually come and uh, have a go at this yourself. But because I'm on stage, I get the first go. Um, uh, okay, has anyone got a suggestion of what you'd like me to try and, and reproduce? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Um, okay, <clears throat> Festival of the Spoken Nerd, or as Matt says it, Festival of the Spoken Nerd. <laughs> oh, it looks Australian, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. There's a lot more colour to it. I think your aura is very green, Matt. I don't yeah, you think do that's like, a scientific um, um, You know, Darth Vader, sort of, I am your father. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> I what about white? Can you do some white noise? Like a shh sort of noise. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully, as geeky people, you might know who Alan Turing is. Don't need to go there. Okay, you're good. <laughs> um, so, his centenary. And then Jonathan Swinton, who's sitting right at the back, had this fantastic idea. Why don't we, in the year of his centenary of his birth... Uh, replicate an experiment little known to the public that Alan Turing was investigating, which was number patterns in sunflowers. So we, in 2012, got the public to grow sunflowers and look at the spirals that you see inside um, sunflowers. Amazing. What, they sent you the pictures? They sent you the numbers? What happened? They, they, so they, they did. Oh, OK. <laughs> and what was really lovely... Hold on, did you add these lines? No. No, they sent you these pictures. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was really lovely is that, uh, that, that when you involve the public in doing science, wonderful other things happen that we wouldn't do as scientists. <laughs> so I thought I would share a few of those things. So this is Isabel, 10 years old. She showed us how she was counting spirals in her sunflowers. So to finish this half, before we head out into the breakout rooms, where there are, I think, one, one, two, three, four different rooms for you to actually get your hands on all these bits of science and exhibitions. For the couple who have everything, I'm getting us both cryogenically frozen. Beer prevents you from getting cholera. Did you? What did you do in the interval? <laughs> uh, are all of you going to go and see the British Library beautiful science exhibition? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Our work Tick, here is we're allowed back. What's the thing you care about more than Venn diagrams? How many Twitter followers I have. <laughs> OK. Is there anything you care about more than that, Steve? I care about having more Twitter followers than those guys. <laughs> um, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, this oh. is Helen and Steve's Twitter follower account. I so know, but you've done a smaller circle there, but that's disingenuous, it, isn't it? Look, I, that's uh, so close together. I've done a smaller numbers. circle by area. Um, oh, it is by okay. <laughs> but me and Helen, are, but me and, me and Helen are doing better than Matt. <laughs> Surely. Oh. oh. Okay. Whoa. Talking to me afterwards, but, right? We all notice at the bottom, they all everyone converges, right? So when people's hands are down, we're all together, right? <laughs> and so if you find someone a different height, if you go to high five, you'll be horribly mismatched. But low fiving, you're bang on. Yay. Right, and so the conclusion is, maybe we've evolved to hold hands. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is your data. Thank you very much. I think the audience will happily agree with me that an OHP equals OMG. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is why we're not bothering to do PowerPoint yeah, slides, right? Because PowerPoint. if you got... A... Oh, hang on. It's frozen. <laughs> no, it hasn't! Yeah! <laughs> what is that? What are you doing, Steve? What are you doing? Oh, you... 
You can still, you can talk. still talk. Oh, sorry, I was feeling left out. <laughs> wow, so you've brought Notepad to the party. Great. Upgrade. <laughs> Say live action mass is hard to beat. I thought it swung from uh, the ridiculous humour all the way up to kind of mathematical stuff that was even way over my head. Brilliant. It's really good.